you're doing may seem weird to 99% of the population, but if it works for you, it allows you to have sustainable cash flow or upside in terms of capital appreciation, then go for it. But the traditional route is basically this. Two schools of thought, fundamentals. You study the company as if it was a business and as if the business was offered to you. So how do you know what stock is worth getting into right now? No one's a crystal ball on what the price will be a year from now, five years from now. Even if you laid everything out and you analyzed it the way you wanted it, which you've seen it consistently over the past few years for this particular company, they've done very, very well. But there are a lot of curveballs that could somehow hit companies in terms of how they're earning. Ultimately, it's how the company performs that is the biggest somehow conviction for people to either buy it or it's how they underperform also that will cause them to shy away from it or also sell their positions and we've seen this similar to what happened in march 2020 because of covid because of the lockdowns companies that were very very good historically saw their businesses interrupted companies who were making money off rentals because everyone was home everyone was sheltered in place everyone did go out also they didn't make any money the travel industry also got hit in the same way in the same fashion anything that has been highly connected to events were also hit so what i'm actually saying is this that even though you lay out your analysis using a lot of sound tools there are a lot of things that could go wrong there are a lot of things also that could hit what you have above and beyond trying to analyze it and making your forecasts and predictions. Risk management is also very important. The ability to protect your portfolio should good times happen, you need to have a mechanism also on how to pocket some of those earnings away that's not emotional or in the same way also when times are bad, you need to also find a way on how you could also either minimize your losses or really to just say goodbye to the companies that aren't really really good also what's interesting about doing proper risk management also is this you can't control what the market will be the next few years but you can control how you manage your risk if you've been following my videos i've been harping on this over and over let's stop trying to predict control or forecast things that are not in our reach why not we just focus on things that we can control so in terms of nitpicking and trying to figure out also how do you actually do it there's really just two ideologies that will give you something that has a good foundation some people just use gut feel some people speculate or even some people just look at rebalancing of some indices also that puts certain stocks on a certain basket and they do know also that when you get added to the index large funds will have to buy it and it adds buying pressure in those particular stocks and if you've been following me more buyers bring the prices up more sellers bring the prices down those have been practiced by some people it doesn't mean it's wrong in the market and in investing it's not about being right it's about being profitable it's not about trying to prove yourself up against other people because what may work for you may not work for other people and what you're doing may seem weird to 99% of the population but if it works for you it allows you to have sustainable cash flow or upside in terms of capital appreciation then go for it but the traditional route is basically this two schools of thought fundamentals you study the company as if it was a business and as if the business was offered to you and you always look at it from that perspective that if your friend came to you and offered you his business what are the questions that you would like to ask meaning how does he make money how many employees does he have how are they earning have they experienced quarters or years also of losses essentially i think if you go that route also it somehow gives you the ability to be able to look at it from i know what i'm investing i know the business that it's on you can look at it also from your level of expertise if you have a lot of exposure say to travel and then you already see okay we're seeing a big boost already in hotel occupancies or at least in flight bookings it would be easy for you to be exposed and invest in companies that are highly connected to travel or in the same way if you know a lot about food and beverage industry 
you will know already who will be the lead market players. But again, in the Philippines, you have a small sample size of companies that are in that category and it will be relatively easier also for you to be able to nitpick and select with that regard. People make it sound that it's so complicated that you need to know a lot about macroeconomics, you need to know a lot about the economy, need, but in reality, if you learn it from an entrepreneurial perspective and you have an idea of how you can analyze businesses from a business point of view, then it would do very, very well. And I'll give you this example. I have a friend. One of his businesses supplies certain raw materials to this food and beverage company. He noticed over the past years that the orders that this particular company is taking from him is bigger. If you try to deduct that logic of reasoning, the fact that this company is getting a larger amount of orders from him, it actually means a couple of things. Either they're selling out more, and they have more customers, and they're actually earning more, or they're actually expanding, which is also a good thing. There are certain things that you may have an edge based on what exposure you have, what industry you are in, which will give you a lead in terms of analyzing certain stocks or certain companies. Like for example, I don't know much about the gambling industry. I'm not an expert in that. That's why it's harder for me to be a long-term investor also into stocks that are highly connected into that space because I don't know much into it. So that's one template. Just look at it from a business perspective. You look at it from a level of how good this business actually is. The second one is just looking at it from a price action perspective, looking at it from a technical analysis point of view that past prices allow you to determine strategic areas where to buy and to sell. It's not prediction, it's not forecasting, but it's basically you looking at the past in order to see where other people think it's cheap and they buy and it forms a level of support and other areas where people think it's expensive and they stop buying or people because they think it's expensive also they take profits and more sellers bring the prices down. Links are here so for you to know more about technical analysis written books down below and we have a technical analysis course which could help you also to determine areas when to buy and when to sell. Two schools of thought. One is looking at it from a business perspective. Number two is looking at it from a trading point of view that you are coming in using past prices and allowing that to help you decide whether it's worth buying or selling. People always fight which is better but if you know how to marry both, personally can use fundamentals to select which companies are good then I could also use technicals in order for me to time when's the best time for me to be able to take a position in this and when's the best time for me to be able to get out take the time to study take the time to learn those are the things that have been very very helpful also in my journey for investing I do hope you got a lot from this I do hope that this was something that was insightful I do hope that this is something that helped you this is Marvin Germo everything's down below if you want to know more about me I hope this video helps you trade well, trade strong, trade smart. See you all again soon and God bless you all.